Praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love. The place for those who lust for high position was not found in, not because there was a shortage of accommodation. The place of that mindset was not found in heaven. shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. I'd like to greet you, my brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name. Amen. It is my pleasure to come here into this church and worship with you. I understand we have people coming from different churches. Uh, we are here for a short program which is focusing on a revival. Um, I just had a week of prayer when I was waking up very early in the morning praying for revival. I finished yesterday morning. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I've been praying for is um, I need God to inject into me a, the Holy Spirit to renew uh, my experience with Christ and uh, to give me new ideas for mission or for soul winning. To give me a new commitment. Sometimes we get tired along the way. Is that right? And you need to go and pray to the Lord for a refilling, a recommitment. And so when I was praying for myself, I also thought about the church. If I get revived by myself and the church is not revived, I think that it's not good, isn't it? All of us need a revival, a revived individuals, and a revived church. So in your prayers, don't be selfish. Pray for the church as well. Amen. Amen. Um, I've got an interesting topic that I want to share with you tonight. Some things that prevent revival from taking place in our lives and uh, in the church of God. If we get rid of those things, then we open the way for the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Amen. As the elder was praying, he said we have a holy jealousy to the uh, Pentecostal church, right? Why are we not like them? Because they put away all the hindrances. They were of one accord. Amen. And then the Spirit came. My topic for tonight is simply entitled The Sinister Practice of Church Politics. Did you hear me right? The Sinister Practice of Church Politics. That is one of the most ugly things that is happening among many a brethren who are waiting for the second coming of Christ. And because of this sinister practice, many people are going to find themselves on the wrong side of heaven. I thought I was going to hear somebody say amen. amen. Yes. Those are the things that have to be uh, uh, removed from among ourselves. And as I speak to you, I'm so glad I'm speaking to a congregation in front of me. But there are many people who are going to be watching this program on television. Um... Did you know that in the house of God, there are people who are discouraged? Some are about to leave church. Others have already left. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? Others have not lost faith in Christ, but they have lost faith and trust in some of their leaders. The way people behave. Are you with me? Others are so grieved and wounded and broken-hearted in their hearts that uh, they've gone even to other denominations. I was reading the book of Isaiah. God is complaining. He says, my people, are, my sheep have been scattered all over the mountains. And nobody is looking for them. Are we together? When I was thinking about this topic, the Lord impressed upon my mind to think of people who are supposed to be in the church but are outside. 
and they've left. And when God's people carry on as if everything is normal, there are some people who are not in church, who left for certain reasons, connected to church politics. People are grieved to see their elders fight. Or their pastors divided. Am I, am I right? When there's too much arguments in the church boards, church business meetings, and some say, I wish I'd not gone there. Am I speaking of real, real things that happen? Yes. We may do all sorts of evangelistic activities out there. But when the conditions are not right inside, even new souls whom we baptize and come into the church, when they notice this, they stay for one month. In the next month, you don't find them in here. And we remain with names in our church registers. But people missing. As if when Christ comes, we're going to present a register to him on that day. Names only with no people. How can a revival come unless these habits are taken away from us? Are we together? Um, I want to give you a definition of what church politics is. You may find that you may, you may be a church politician, unawares, when I t give you the definition. Okay, the definition of church politics goes as follows. These are act activities within a church organization or any organization Activities that are aimed at improving one's status or one's position in the church or one's power or one's welfare. And these activities are considered dubious, divisive, or they cause people to be divided and they are full of deceit. The process of enhancing oneself, one's position, one's power within the church when one embarks on devious activities, the process of church politics includes debating, criticism, smear campaign of other people's characters to belittle them in the eyes of the congregation while I want to enhance myself. Are you with me? The process of church politics includes debate, criticism, smear campaign, lies about other brethren. Deception or brainwashing people even to declare war against perceived opponents and persons viewed as threats um, in the church who may serve to impede the process of one rising to a certain position. This is the most heinous scene that is found among God's people today. And I'm going to tell you the truth that it affects lay persons and some theologians. Are you with me? In the process of lasting for power and position. And so I want to assure you, unless we repent from this kind of sin, let's forget about revival. If you want to understand why there are factions in the house of God, it is because of this process. Are you with me? Yes. So I envy the disciples, the, the Pentecostal church. They were of one accord. They overcame this process. And now today, uh, there are people who are not supposed to be called God's servants, but rightly speaking are supposed to be called church politicians. Church politics is the sinister desire to ascend above the brethren. To be at the apex. To last for high position in the house of God. I've been to places where church elections have been conducted. A man was once in a high position. The next nominating committee chooses him to go to a to be a deacon and an usher. I've seen people who feel demoted. Am I right? 
Do we talk of demotion in the house of God? Now, I want to show you the genesis of church politics, the beginnings, the genesis. How did it begin? Uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. I'm tracing the genesis of church politics. There are so many sheep that are scattered on the mountains, gone away from church. Some feel it is better to watch Hope Channel or Isambul at home than to come and attend church. It has become cold for them. Are you with me? They feel they have no place because of church politics. The genesis of church politics, Isaiah 14 verse 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground? which did weaken the nations. For you said in your heart, I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars or above the angels of God. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Church politics is the sinister desire to what? To ascend above the brethren. We are talking about the church in heaven. One guy felt he needed to ascend above his own brethren. Are you with me? He was not happy with his position. He had this sinister desire to keep rising above his fellow angels, above, above the heavenly church, to equate himself with God on the highest seat. Have you ever seen this desire in you or in some people? People with a passion for high position. Not a passion for the three angels' messages. Are you with me? They get sick for high position. So this spirit originated in the heart of Lucifer. And I'm going to show you and trace it nicely. When he was cast into this earth, he came to seek men and women to recruit. That they may walk in his steps. In the house of God. To make it their business to seek to rise and ascend above the brethren. But the Bible says, Lucifer, you shall be brought to the pit of hell. The destiny of all church politicians is hellfire. Somebody say amen, please. <laughs> the destiny of all people whose burden and passion is to rise above their brethren in the house of God, by whatever means, is hellfire. Lucifer lusted and coveted for the highest seat in the universe. And God happened to be sitting on that seat. And so... He started to hate God because he was sitting on the seat that he wanted. Are you with me? And so, what did he do? He went on a propaganda campaign. Smear campaign, the process of church politics involves smear campaign. It involves lying about the hated person who occupies the position you want. Are you with me? He started a smear campaign to paint God black in the eyes of the heavenly church members. He went and saw angel by angel, talking about who? God. How bad God was and how good he, he, uh, Lucifer was. He said, guys, if you could choose me to be your leader, I would do better, perform better than, than God. I don't know if there was an email there. He started to email each angel. <laughs> SMS each angel. Are you with me? And as you know, this disturbed worship in the heavenly temple. Worship ceased. There was confusion. Am I right? Because of one guy who desired to ascend above his brethren. The Bible teaches us that he managed to deceive how many? One third of the heavenly church. 
correct. He brainwashed them and convinced them that God was bad and he was the right candidate. It is so sad, my brothers and sisters, as we talk about revival in the church of God, even around the world, in many countries where our church is, you hear of stories of people who are involved in church politics, who do exactly the same process, de-campaigning one arm, another. Yet Jesus is coming, his coming is so near. All the energy we are supposed to be using in preaching the three angels' messages is bent in doing each other down. How do you think Saturn feels? Happy, he's got nice recruits who are walking in his steps. Are you with me? Two-thirds of the heavenly angels said, Brother Lucifer, we have heard your story, but we are going to check with God whether what you are saying about him is correct. One third said, yes, sir, you are right. They never went and checked with God. The Bible says, he that judges a matter without hearing both sides is a fool. When a rumor monger comes to you to smear a campaign a brother, to smear a campaign a fellow member, hear both sides. One third of the angels heard one side only and formed an opinion against God. Two thirds said, no, we'll check with him to verify the facts. Normally, a man who has the character of the evil one says, brother, between you and me, <laughs> don't say I told you so. The moment you hear a person say that, you must know they are walking in the footsteps of Satan. I wonder, are you like the one third of the angels or the two thirds? The two thirds would check issues, eh? Even in the courts, secular courts, if I accuse my brother or sister, the, the judge will not just pass sentence. He wants the accuser and the accused that he may hear both sides and give a fair sentence. So the devil brain, brainwashed one third of the heavenly angels and deceived them. It formed a faction. Can you see this? So factionalism did not begin on earth. It began in the heavenly church. Church politics began where? In heaven. And when, I can imagine one Sabbath morning, people, uh, the angels attended worship, uh, you know, as usual, but already there was a faction among them. Those who were in the choir, and Lucifer here, he was a great musician, isn't it? Lucifer said, today I'm not conducting the choir. And one third, so we're not singing today. Two thirds remained waiting for a conductor. Nobody came to sing. Have you seen people who protest in God's house? I won't sing. I won't pray. Even my tithe, I'm withdrawing. You must know the one in whom you have believed. Amen. Or you walk in the footsteps of the devil. One day, God is walking in heaven. He meets his angels. They always rejoice. Hello. You know, they worship him. Jesus is smiling at some angels and they're just frowning at him. The one third. They were brainwashed without hearing the other side of the story. Amen. Have you walked in church and you've just found people hating you for nothing? They don't want to greet you. They don't want, want to talk to you. They've heard something about you, but they've not verified. That's part of the process of brainwashing. Are you with me? He lied about God, deceived one third of the angels. Some deacons in heaven refused to take their duties. Are you with me? Those who were assigned their duties, who belonged to the one third, they ceased to worship God. When others were singing, worthy, worthy is the lamb, glory to God in the highest, others stopped singing that song. Because of church politics. Today on the church on earth, many people are in various groups and factions. They hate each other. They don't talk to each other. They are suspicious of each other's motives because of one or two church politicians who are seeking to garner support to their side. Are you with me? Especially as we go for church elections. When somebody is lasting for a particular position, they have a way of building support for themselves. 
Are you with me? I'm now talking about real issues. Whether it is local churches or people are going to conference sessions or whatever sessions. Are you with me? You always find factions in the groups. Are, are you with me? How can Jesus pour his spirit among a divided people? And when we do campaigns and we baptize people, they come into church and then they notice these things. Will they stay in the house of God? We need to come back to the drawing board and make things right. Amen. Amen. Lucifer, the Bible teaches that the two-thirds who refused to be brainwashed to his side in his bid to topple God from his position, he started to hate angels like Gabriel and others who chose not to follow his ideas. The Bible says he accused them before God day and did you think he accused the one third? They were on his side. So he started to attack those who were not on his side. That's the process of church politics. You always talk bad about people who are not on your side. Those who think the way I think, I call them my friends. It started in heaven. And when the deceiver's plans were matured, he thought he had won enough support. He started by deception, secret meetings. Are you with me? Persuading each angel, talking to this one and that one for some time. But it came to pass that he declared war. The Bible says, and there was war in, in heaven. War, 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 let me say, there was war in the church. Because I want to be like God, to sit on top of the congregation. So there was war in the church. What was the cause of the war in the church? Lust for high. Let's speak loudly, please. <laughs> Lust for high. Have you heard of wars and rumors of wars in the church? Jesus said there shall be wars and rumors of wars. I thought it was in the secular world only. Even in the house of God, there are wars and rumors of wars. What is the issue? The desire to ascend. Above the brethren. The devil had secret meetings. I'm not surprised when people are going for elections in any setting. If the spirit of God is not there, there are secret caucuses. Where people meet secretly. Am I right? And some even produce a list of prescribed names. I've traveled in many places. They know whom they want to be elder, who should be the deacon, before the church has prayed. He that is an irrelative what? How will God pour his Holy Spirit among a people who are now blaspheming the role of the Holy Spirit? I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit's role. The early church when they were going for elections to choose leaders, Acts chapter 13 says they prayed and fasted. And the Holy Spirit said to the nominating committee, separate for me Paul and Barnabas for the work I have assigned them. Nobody campaigned, nobody politicked, nobody smear campaigned anybody. They all prayed and they heard the Spirit say, separate for me Paul and? In our age today, in some places, People produce lists prescribed before the election day in the church. Are you with me? They are wiser than the Holy Spirit. And I'm afraid to say, some clergymen and some laymen do these kinds of things because of lust for high positions. If Lucifer was promised the hellfire for this, they will not escape. The Bible says, there was Revelation 12, verse 7, there was war in heaven, war in the church. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And he prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out, into the earth and his angels with him. 
Can you see the fate of church politicians? Can you see them? Did they ascend? They descended. They were cast out. Am I right? The Bible says their place was not found anymore in heaven. Somebody said it's not because there are no houses or mansions in heaven to accommodate these guys. There was no shortage of housing. But what does the Bible mean when it says their place was not found? The place of a church political mind was not found in heaven. Somebody says amen. amen. The place for those who lust for high position was not found in, not because there was a shortage of accommodation. The place of that mindset was not found in heaven, and they were cast out. If I am going to be there where the devil was cast out, I must have a different mindset. If the devil's ambition for being in church was to ascend, I'd rather descend. Humble yourself, and he will lift you. Lift yourself up, he will bring you down. No matter how talented you are. Lucifer was the best talented angel. Amen? Another angel was chosen to replace him in his position. It is better to have worship with less talented people who are humble than to have worship with greatly talented persons who are proud. Correct? Humility. Humility. Last for high position. So it says, now he was cast out into the earth. I asked some people when I was presenting the other day, said, the devil was cast into the earth. Where is he today? And they said he's in the Middle East. <laughs> where the Garden of Eden was. <laughs> and I said, no. The, devil, the Bible says he was cast into the earth. Make sure he was not cast into your house. Make sure he was not cast into your church. Because wherever the devil is, there is the spirit of church politics. He's not in the Middle East. Maybe he's in your heart. Maybe he's in your house. Maybe he's in your church. Maybe he's in your district. Are you with me? Their place was not found anymore. And when they were cast into this earth, the devil came with a mission to recruit men after his own image, after his own likeness. And particularly the book of Revelation says he started to pursue the woman or the church that keeps the commandments of Jesus. And he is pursuing the remnant church to infuse it with his spirit. And so I'm not surprised when I find the church politicians within the remnant church. The devil has managed to sow tears in the house of God. Tomorrow night I'm going to speak about Judas and the three angels' messages. I will, I will doubt your intelligence if you don't come to hear that one tomorrow. Judas and the three angels' messages. You are going to get the shock of your life. It's good to be there uh, tomorrow. He came to recruit men like himself. My brothers and sisters, is it no wonder today that we have people who are lusting for high positions, lusting to be head elder, lusting to be conference officer or, or president. Am I right? There is no problem if God chooses you by his spirit to be there. But if you indulge in church politics, the process of smear campaigning your brothers, your sisters, to do them down so that you may ascend, then you are walking in the steps of the wicked one. Somebody say amen, please. If I said the beast is so and so, there will be good amens here. Now truth is coming in the inner court of the soul. <laughs> are you with me? Let me give you a few examples. Do you know that today in the church of God, somewhere, somewhere, there are people who are now called the royal families. Elder for life. <laughs> if he misses it that year, he stops coming to church. He protests. Are you with me? I'm talking about things that happen in the house of 
of God. Today, we, I told you about people who already have caucuses before election dates. They have their lists already prescribed. They know who is to be where. And they strategically organize themselves. So and so must be in the nominating committee. So and so must be the chair. Am I right? And uh, they raise to put their people there to advance their side or their faction. Correct? These things happening among God's people. How will the Holy Spirit come? Are we serious about revival? Are we willing to let the Holy Spirit do his will to choose whomsoever he, he will? Now, when people strategize like that, you know in some places, because of lust for high position, some people are so threatened to see new talent coming into the church. Potential elders coming into the church. Am I right? Potential deacons, potential Sabbath school leaders. They are not very comfortable. Then the new members say, excuse me, say, I wish to have my name, name transferred to this church. I know of places where people will sit down on people's names and not request their membership to be transferred. Why do they do that? They only wait for election day. When that person's name is chosen, they say, ah, pastor, only technicality, his name is not yet here. <laughs> I am speaking about the, pro the evil of church politics. So when the name is not here, we consider the names that are here already. And somebody knows I have more chances of remaining there. People have worshipped for over a year or a year and a half in a particular congregation. Their names not transferred. Those who do such things are robbing the church of God of the talent that he brings to the church, but church politics suppresses them. People grow in a church by participating in the lifestyle, in the, in the activities of their church. Amen. I know some particular places where people would want everybody to contribute to church projects, but they don't want their membership there. You didn't understand what I said. We only love your money, but not your membership here. Brothers and sisters, if we are going to ascend into the kingdom of heaven, we need to be totally converted. I know of places, church politics. When people are going for election, they say, a man from this tribe will never be an elder here. <laughs> what if the Holy Spirit wants that person? When Jesus says there is no more Greek, no more Jew. Somebody listening to me? The church politician does not listen to Jesus when he says there is no more Greek, no more Jew. He has his own way. And then he takes this gospel to his own people, his tribe, his race, his ethnic group, and he says, a man of this color will never be an elder here. And then he prejudices the minds of God's innocent people. I strongly believe, were it not for church politicians, God's people will be united across color, race, tribe. Am I right? Yes. Ordinary people want to unite, but the church politicians somewhere is dividing the people. Jesus is coming soon. And I want to assure you the Holy Spirit is going to come upon the church when all church politicians have been chucked out by Christ. I'm now praying for the shaking to come into the church. God shake out that material which must be shaken out so that that which remains might remain. God's people must pull together in these last days. Amen. Amen. But the church politician is dividing the church. This is what is preventing the Holy Spirit from coming in a double portion upon the remnant church. Somebody say amen. amen. And many are walking in the footsteps of Satan. Lucifer's problem was not theology. Are you with me? He stood next to God. He knew the things of God. His problem was not doctrine. His problem was not church manual. His problem was not the church policy. 
His problem was lust for high position. And today, many people, some have been in our theological colleges. The problem is not doctrine. It's not theology. It's not Hebrew. It's not Greek. It's lust for high position. That's the problem that consumes uh, the heart of some of our brethren. And in the process, church politics activities dividing the church. And I've heard of places where people manipulate church elections. Are you with me? The role of a chairman in the nominating committee is just to outline the policy which guides how we elect members. Amen. But the moment you see a chairman having a side, he's now electing. That's not his role. There are few amens tonight, is it? <laughs> the role of a chairman in the nominating committee is just to outline the policies. When we, the members are getting out, he says, no, policy says, and we follow. The moment he has a vested interest, you see a nominating committee taking six hours or stopping at mid 12 midnight. The chairman is arguing in favor of the candidate he wants and say, brother, we have objections and he supports those names. That's not the role of a chairman. I've seen people walking out of nominating committees grieved, getting headaches from a chairman who is belonging to a faction. Who wants his brothers and sisters in? Are you with me? Amen. Brothers, let's now look in the inner court of the soul and see if we are clean. How easy it is to say the beast is so and so. <laughs> in the church, I found people called the vocal few and the ignorant crew. <laughs> the vocal few always dominates. They speak too much. Am I right? Their word is doctrine for the church. Their opinion is the rule. And the vocal few dominate. They usually, these are the ones who prescribe, prescribe names for others. They choose so and so. And the ignorant crew, <laughs> those who don't know the, the doctrine, the word of God, and the church manual, and the church policies, some, somebody said they belong to the Amen Committee. Their role is just to say amen. <laughs> amen. When they are implementing the vocal fuse ideas. My brothers, as we pray for ourselves, let's pray for the church of God around the world. Wherever you go, there are a vocal few people. Influential. Am I right? Their word is like doctrine. And as the devil brainwashed one third, Many of our people are brainwashed in the process. And the devil normally takes advantage of the ignorance of the people. So there are those who also take the, uh, advantage of the ignorance of the congregation. Church politics. In some places, I remember when I was a youngster, the gospel minister where I worshipped, Wherever there was a church election, he could tell you a month or two in advance. And you could have a week of prayer. Fasting and prayer and education. Am I right? Church manual, what is the nominating committee, what is this and that, everything. And he taught the church. By the time the elections came, every member was schooled in the things of God. In some places, not here. Somebody says, we will not announce the date for elections. Because if I do announce, you will rig. <laughs> no prayer, no fasting, no educating, even the newly baptized. I found the newly baptized sometimes in the nominating committee. They have no idea of church manual, no idea of nominating committee. Am I right? Sometimes church politics leads people to keep others ignorant. For the ignorant are easily manipulated. They easily listen to the vocal few. They think it, it is a sin to say, oh, say I have an objection. They think it's a sin. And normally, 
people are smuggled through the nominating committees to occupy positions of responsibility. Today, in our church somewhere, we have people who have Pentecostal inclinations in our church boards. How did they get there? They were smuggled through the nominating committees. Somebody say amen. amen. We have people who sit in our church board somewhere who say, who is Ellen White? Question the, the, the spirit of prophecy. And some stand in the pulpit and say, who is Ellen White? How did they land in those positions? Church politics. The uncle was the chairman of the nominating committee. The cousins were in the nominating committee and they pushed for his name to sail through. And some say, guys, are we infiltrated? Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. People with Pentecostal sentiments in our boards somewhere. Are you with me? I was wondering who is pushing, pushing a homosexual agenda at a GC session. How did he get there? The Bible teaches while men slept, the enemy sowed tears. And I want to say there are tears now among us. Men and women who are attacking the pillars of our faith from within. Through the process of church politics. Smuggled in. Some men who are not worthy to be pastors are now pastors. Because the uncle was the conference president. Son, you want to be a pastor? Come from the rural areas. Just come and join. <laughs> the Bible says, when I go, I will send the Holy Spirit. He shall guide you. He himself is the guide of the church. He said to the apostles, separate from me Paul and Barnabas. He is still, the Holy Spirit is the person who is rightfully supposed to be choosing, am I right? People to do God's work in particular positions. But church politicians don't respect the Holy Spirit's work. They choose. And after choosing, they say God has done his will. They say God has done his what? Are you sure it is God? How can the Holy Spirit come among us, my friends, when we do not respect the role of the Holy Spirit? Today, men and women have been smuggled through the nominating committees by church politics. Some of them are actually leading the church away from the three angels' messages. You hardly hear a sermon on the three angels' messages in many a congregation. They say, that's not the only message. Says the head elder. Says the personal ministry council. That's not the only message. Who is Ellen White? We are two judgmental brothers. That's what people say, isn't it? Do you think we, the Adventists, are the only holy ones? Other people are also holy. So what's unique about our message? If you don't believe in the remnant message that God gave to us, we're having those voices now within our, our systems. The Bible says in Ezekiel, put a mark upon the foreheads of all the people who are crying because of the sin that is taking place in Jerusalem among my people. Revival will not come until we start crying to God to purify his church. Amen. 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 Then let's forget about revival. Let me just move a bit. I want to show you the example of Jesus Christ in Philippians 2. I love that scripture. Philippians 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God, 
thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. When brothers and sisters have lost sight of Christ, they become church politicians. When they've lost sight of Christ, they become like Lucifer. They have this passion to ascend above the brothers. They have this passion for high positions. Am I right? But when they look at Christ, he was equal with God. Very high position. And he humbled himself. And he descended. Are you with me? While Lucifer would ascend to the high position, Jesus descended to the lowest position. Let this mind be in you. But this mind is not in many in the house of God. There are many who, have the they who bear titles or uh, holy titles on them who don't have this mind. <laughs> if everybody had this mind, there will be no faction in the house of God. There will be no church politicking. There will be no fighting. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit would come. Jesus made himself of no reputation. How many of us are sick for honor? Recognition. In the house of God. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow when I talk about Judas and the three angels, we are going to understand something very interesting. Judas came to Christ because of two things. Love for high position and love for money. And the eleven had a passion for mission. Tomorrow we have an exciting time, is it? Amen. He made himself of no reputation. And he became a servant, a serviceman. He came to seek and save the lost. Those who want to ascend above the brethren, normally by politicking, are not interested in service. They don't want to be servants. They want the highest seat. One day Jesus said to the Pharisees, they love the highest seats in the synagogues. Pharisees, am I right? Let God appoint and choose who occupies what place. Amen. Amen. Don't make it your career, <laughs> your burden to pursue high positions by deceit, by lies, by falsifying reports, or by smear campaigning the brethren. Are you with me? In the process, you confuse new souls. Some leave church, some have given up, and the blood of those people will be required on you. Yes, God will charge you. And you will not be in the heavens where Lucifer was cast out, except you have a different mind, the mind of Jesus. He made himself of no reputation. He took the lowest position. He even washed the feet of the disciples. Amen. Amen. Who is willing to do the dirtiest work? Satan has come to recruit people after his own kind. Amen. But uh, God has forewarned us. I know it's not happening here. If anybody had this kind of mindset, please repent. It is the Luciferian direction that you are taking. Walk in the way of Jesus. Be content in any position that God gives you. You can be a door usher and see the kingdom. There is no like hierarchy in the house of God. Amen. God calls people and he gives gifts to people. Amen. Some he gave to be administrators, others evangelists, others teachers. But if a teacher wants to be an administrator, something wrong. If a door usher wants to be the treasurer, funds will go missing in the house of God. If a soccer coach knows where to place a particular player, and he will never put a goalkeeper to be a striker, God knows where to put you in his church. Don't aspire for what he has not given you. In the process, you may become like Lucifer. How art thou fallen, O Lucifer? Thou which said, I will ascend. You will find yourself in hellfire. Those who humble themselves will find themselves exalted. How many are, are wounded by church politics? How many have left? How many have decided to go? 
How many are blaspheming the role of the Holy Spirit? Can I finish by reading? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. The sinister practice of church politics. In some places, church politicians will say, don't ever give sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so a sermon or even a prayer in church. We don't like his messages. They are too sharp and too straight. Am I right? People who are pleasing to the ear must occupy the pulpit. But if we love the messages that will take us to the kingdom, amen, let us hear the word of God. Let's not have preferential treatment because it, the, the Bible teaches us that in the last days men shall have itching ears and uh, will seek to hear those things that please them. But when messages that rebuke our sin come to us, we must humble ourselves and pray. Amen. First Timothy chapter 6, 11 says, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, and fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Woman of God, men of God, flee these things. Which things? Church politics. Flee it. Am I right? Let God work through whom he will. And I want to say to you, don't be like one third of the angels who suspended their own convictions about God and took Lucifer's convictions. Amen. When you are, he says you are an individual, unique, created by God. Then the Bible says, let each man be persuaded in his own. You don't need Lucifer's mind to be your mind. You need a personal connection to God. When you are in the church, there are some people who echo other people's views. You know what I'm saying? They cannot think for themselves. When they preach, they preach a sermon which they heard somebody preach. They have not connected to God to hear for themselves. That's what the one third of the angels did. They suspended their own thoughts for Lucifer's views. Today many people hate each other because so and so said so and so is bad. But they never did any bad thing to you. You just heard him say and you took their thoughts to be your thoughts. And today you don't see eyeball to eyeball. Many people who are called bad people are very good people. Had you visited them and had first-hand personal contact with them. Are you with me? Flee these things. Rumor mongering. Smear campaign. Brother so-and-so is bad. He cannot be elder. And you cast your vote against him. But you have not seen how bad he is. You just heard he's bad. Men of God pursue righteousness. Amen. Peace and faithfulness. Okay, as the wicked men pursue the, 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 in the steps of the wicked one. Ellen White says there, there's a lot of unused talent in the church. Some people are fearing to participate lest they be criticized. And so they remain in their cocoon hidden with great potential hidden. And some people have come to believe they are one or two who know how to do things in the house of God. And they suspend their talents. A good leader, a good church, amen, encourages people to participate. Even Jesus says, greater things than these shall you do. Amen. Jesus never mind, he did not mind for Peter to baptize 3,000, am I right? When he himself never baptized 3,000. There are some people who feel bad when other people are used by God to a great extent. John said, let him increase and let me decrease. When that mind comes among us, nobody will be striving for the highest seat and the highest honor. Amen. Just for lasting for high position, Lucifer is hell bound. But he was cast into this earth to recruit people like himself that he may not burn alone. Will you be with him there? If you are not with him there, then you have the mind of Jesus of lowliness. 
Are you with me? I know if, if, uh, if a gentleman has not been chosen to remain in some high office, where they're at a conference or a union level, and they say you can pick up the district pastorship, he refuses. He feels it's a demotion from the top to the district. But Jesus descended lower than that. <laughs> from the highest throne to be a servant. You can't descend from the conference to a district. You cannot descend from the head eldership to an usher. Where have you done your theology? Which Bible have you read? You shall know them by their fruit. Some of us want the Holy Spirit to come. Jesus, come and revive us. Amen. When I go to heaven, if I made a door, I shall be content, my brother. If I'm a toilet cleaner in heaven, thank God as long as I'll be there. <laughs> if you aspire to be the elder, somebody says there are already 24 elders. They, <laughs> they won't be 25 anyway. <laughs> are you with me? This mind focus on positions will see you in hellfire. The church will make progress when some brothers are dead. Who are hindrances to the progress of God's work. Saul kept on pursuing David. And David lived in caves. But God had anointed him to be king. There are those who will not permit God to anoint others to be elders. To anoint others to be deacons. They will not permit God to anoint others to be conference officers. They will keep throwing spears. Not only missing the Davids of God, but God will make a way for David. So die soon. As G Judas died, then the Spirit came at Pentecost when Judas was gone. Friend, come tomorrow. Are you a Judas betraying the three angels? When you are gone, the church will be united. Perhaps it's only waiting for your death. May God bless you so much. He that has ears to hear, let him. Amen. He that has been involved in church politics, repent. Amen. It won't take you anywhere. Amen. Amen. In these last days, God is taking control of his church. Amen. Ellen White says there are some people who have a passion for control that they will even try to control the Holy Spirit. Amen. But God won't permit you in these last days. Amen. Either you have to repent or you... You, you go where you belong. We are going to meet again as we talk about Judas and the three angels. We are going to conclude our service with a season of prayer. Maybe somebody has left church because of you. What you said about them. How you treated them. Maybe you have been an administrator who has not been doing things right. You have been elbowing others out lest they take your position. Now you say, Lord, thank you for this message. I want to confess this thing. Give me whatever position you desire and help me to serve you there with joy. Amen. We also want to pray for the church around the world. God, kick out the spirit of church politics. Let's confess the sins of people who are no better than the Holy Spirit, who choose and give lists before people have prayed. The chorus will lead us, sweet hour of prayer. We are going to pray in twos, and then I will conclude. Sweet hour of prayer. Let's pray for a revival. We're not talking about the beast tonight, isn't it? Don't worry about him. Let's worry about ourselves. Blessed are those whose aim is to please God in whatever they do. Blessed are those who are content in whatever position God calls them to serve him. Blessed are those who are going to cause unity in the house of God rather than division. Blessed are those who are going to mourn for the church and pray for a revival in the global church. Amen. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Our Father who art in the kingdom of heaven, in Jesus' name we salute you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for causing your face to shine upon us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for sending your Holy Spirit to unlock the deep things of God for us. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to know how Lucifer fell because of lust for high position. And his character became rotten 
when he started to smear campaign hate lie in order to get a high position. We thank you, Lord, for showing us the destiny of a church politician called Lucifer, Hellfire. Help us not to join him there. I pray, Lord, for your people here and those that are watching this program in many nations. Father, get rid of the cancer of church politics in your house, in whomever it is found, be it in a theologian or a layman. Father, we pray, let none be found on Lucifer's side. Forgive us, Lord, for we have sinned against you. We have divided uh, according to different categories and uh, battles and wars have been fought in your house. And this has discouraged many souls. Give us a turning point. Beginning here, Lord, in Johannesburg, in Georgia, and many churches here represented. Father, let there be a new era. Give us a new page and saturate us with your spirit and help us to share with our brethren who are still involved in such evil practices that we may win them over to the side of Christ. Father, we pray for those who have left the church, who are grieved, who are victims of church politics. Comfort them, Lord, and bring them back again to the fold. Dismiss us now with a blessing and escort us to our homes. Bless those people who have come tonight. Bless them whatever they do, whatever they touch, and bring them again tomorrow as we listen to this important topic, Judas and the three angels. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.